are a bed of spices, and it goes on and on and on like this until we get to 516. His mouth is most sweet, yay! He is altogether lovely, and that is the adjective that is describing the lover. Altogether lovely is Mahmoud. Mah Mah I don't know. I have not come up and pronounced the word right, because I am butchering it more than you are. But here we read the same word, Mahmoud. We have it in First King. Yet I will send my servants unto thee to the morrow about this time, and they shall search thy whatsoever is Mahmed, they shall put in their hands and take it away. In Lamentations chapter two, four, he hath bent his bow. God is doing this. He's talking about God. He hath bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary, and slew all, <clears throat> excuse me, that were Mahmed in the, the eyes, in poured out his fury like fire. He slew, let me repeat, and slew all that were pleasant to the eye, all Mahmed in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. <clears throat> and finally, we have in, ver in Isaiah 5, um, I'm sorry, in Isaiah 64, 11. Our holy and our beautiful house, where our fathers praise thee, is burnt up with fire. And all our Mahmeds are laid waste. All our Mahmeds are laid waste. Now, if you want to say, I find this interesting, this argument, army of Jesus, if you want to say that an adjective is somehow now a noun, and somehow not just a noun, it's a proper noun, because it kind of sounds similar to Muhammad in another language, okay, fine. If the Hebrew word that is an, ab that is, that is an adjective Mahmed, used to describe because it's plural, it's a sign of respect. Yes, calling someone altogether lovely, I agree with you, is a sign of respect. If you were to call me altogether lovely, if you were to call me Mahmed, I would say thank you very much, and you're absolutely right. I am altogether lovely. But if you want to now say, take this word in Hebrew, that is an adjective, not a noun, and somehow call it a noun, and then say it's a proper noun, which is someone's name in, in uh, which is someone's name in Arabic, because it sounds similar. Then you got a problem, because Akbar in Hebrew means mouse. So therefore, when you Muslims say Allah Akbar, you are saying Allah is a mouse. If you want to be consistent. Now, I, I want to continue on here. Let me find the rest of my notes. Um, you said that um, Muhammad, or that, that um, the message is the Savior. You, in, in responding to Jesus, um, that Jesus is the Savior. Um, you said, no, it, it means the message is the Savior. No, I'm sorry. Um, Nat, can you post the verses where it talks about how Jesus says he is the way and the life and the truth? These verses, if you could please, I told you to be prepared. If you're not prepared, that's fine. We can move on. But the point being, army of Jesus, in order for you to make your case about Muhammad being in the Bible, you must ignore so much, so much, in order to make this case that uh, I'm sorry. You're arguing with Christians who believe the Bible and read the Bible, and you're twisting this stuff completely, adding words to it, even adding words. No, it really means, as you said, that it's his message. Nowhere does it say that. Here we go. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You really knew me. You would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So Jesus is the perfect representation of the Father. 
So again, I ask you, army of Jesus, answer me these questions. How can you say Muhammad is in the Bible when you have to take a, a, a adjective that is describing a lover and make it into a proper noun in another language? <clears throat> How can you say that Jesus is, or I mean that Muhammad is in the G, is in the Bible when you you are quoting things about the Holy Spirit that is a spirit that Acts three? What is it? Acts three? Oh darn! I lost it here. Um, Acts three. Um, da -da 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 -da. Um, Acts 3, I'm sorry, um, ah, Acts, I'm sorry, Acts 9.31 clearly defines as the Holy Spirit. When you have to sit there and, and, and say that, well, no, it's really not talking about that. It's talking about a message. When does it say anything about a message? How can you do that? How can you honestly do that? And, and finally, you, you brought up these Jehovah's Witnesses and Unitarians. Fine, okay. They may call themselves Christians, but they do not follow the Bible. Then fine. When we argue about Islam, I will bring up Shia. When we argue with Sunni Muslims, I will bring up what Shia believe. I will bring up what Ahmadians believe. I will bring up what all these different various heretical sects that you Muslims declare as heretical. Achmedians cannot even go on Hajj. I will bring up what they believe and ascribe it to what you believe. I'm sorry, sir. That is just a false analogy. And I'm sorry. How can you honestly expect us Christians to take you serious when you have to do this? The point is clear, and I'm done off the mic. Well, we went from 30 seconds to zero minutes in a matter of Four seconds? Amazing. I'm off the mic. Okay, everyone. I'm going to play from a Hebrew-speaking person who reads Songs of Solomon. Let's see if he pronounces it as Mahmad or Muhammad. Let's all listen. <laughs> You'll, you'll hear that? Let's hear it again. Okay, so now you can fight Radical Moderator and hear Muhammadim as it, as it, as it is mentioned. And notice what Radical Moderator said. He said, Oh, the Holy Spirit isn't Jesus. We don't say the Holy Spirit is Jesus. So who's the Holy Spirit then? Isn't the Holy Spirit God according to you? So if the Holy Spirit isn't Jesus, that means that Jesus is a separate God. Thank you for proving that you're a paganistic religion and you're believing in two different gods and the Holy Spirit isn't Jesus and Jesus isn't the Holy Spirit. Thank you for exposing yourself. And then he also said... Um, uh, what else? He brought up the verses in regards to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as, you know, as the comforter. Is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the comforter? Which verse did he bring up? One second. In Songs of Solomon, he was talking about adjectives. Okay, let's go ahead and refute that actually. Now, remember folks, if you look at the whole context, and I hope I do, I've got time to say this actually. 30 seconds. Well, I'm not going to be able to respond in 30 seconds to Songs of Solomon. I'll respond to Songs of Solomon in minutes. Okay? So, next two minutes, I'll respond to Songs of Solomon in regards to the adjectives. Uh, I wish we actually had a bit more time so we can refute it now, but that's fine. We'll refute it next. Uh, what else do you say? Oh, he said, oh, Allah actually means mouse or something in the actual Hebrew. Well, in, in the Turkish language, the word sik, excuse me for my language, but it actually means a private part of a man. If you translate it in English, it actually means a sick person. So do we now defame the word sick in, 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 in uh, English and make fun of it and say, oh, look, it actually means private part? No, 
it means a sick person. So I don't know where you're going with that argument. Of course, languages change and meanings change and sometimes some languages might have the same phrases but different uh, interpretations. Uh, three seconds. So when I come back, I'll refute some of the